All right, currently at the Secretary of State. I'm gonna go get the carob legal, so let's go see what the damages are. All right, ahoy there. Uh, not the best news for my first trip to the Secretary of State with the carob. Uh, sadly, they are having issues finding the title in their system. So they had to contact somebody in Lansing to which is our state, which is our state's capital, to do like a title search. And they weren't able to get into anybody, so they had to contact somebody in South Carolina now who's gonna have to get a hold of blah 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 to get the title information back to them because for some reason the title's not showing up in the system, which doesn't really surprise me. Uh, but I did buy this car more or less wholesale from a pretty reputable uh, Japanese car importer, so I'm not overly concerned about it. It'll come out okay in the end, otherwise I'll title swap it. Oh, just kidding. Nah, it should be okay. So, just a matter of playing the waiting game now. Uh, thankfully, my appointment is not typically closed, so I don't have to remake a, you know, an appointment online or anything like that and show up at a certain time. I can pretty much just dip in whenever they call me, which she said will be up to four business days, but it's a beautiful Monday. That Volvo V70's got some noisy brakes. But it's a beautiful Monday, and I don't want to waste this beautiful day. So uh, let's go get some work done in the garage back home, I guess. Yo. I think that's one of those Honda ACT-Ys. Well, just because I didn't get a real plate today doesn't mean we can't throw on my faux DM plate. So this is a plate I got from customjapaneseplates.com. I want to say it's a website. No, they just do literally custom Japanese plates. So um, I guess let's throw this one on. Well, I forgot to film this because I'm dumb, but this is the plate that I got, 25 for AL25, and then that little uh, prefecture right there is for Osaka. I picked that because I know somebody that lives in Osaka, so I thought I figured it was, it was cool and just I'll do Osaka. Well, I got done, and I found this in the car, and this is one of those little uh, license plate-like things. Uh, my, the terminologies are fleeting my mind now that I'm putting myself on camera like this, but this is essentially the prefecture that it is from, and in order to actually confirm this, I fired up the GPS in there and kind of checked some location history and checked some, like, saved checkpoints, and it, sure enough, was in Ibaraki Prefecture, potentially for a while, I really don't know, but... Yeah, so now I have this Osaka plate, and it's not actually in Osaka, or from Osaka, which is kind of a bummer, but this is really cool. Speaking of cool things, here's some other stuff I found in here. All right, so I found this in here, which this is an old, like, toll pass or something like that um, from, it was almost 30 years old. I can't remember the exact year. Anybody who can read Japanese notes, maybe can figure out the year, but uh, it's almost 30 years old, which is really cool. Pass for um, a toll at in the Kanagawa, I want to say is what it is. It's somewhere near Yokohama Station is what I was told. I believe that's what I'm getting correctly. And this is the Sky Park over here. Um, this is fairly old, too, which is not super old, but it's pretty old, which is really cool. And then these are, like, some tissues that I found. And then I found a couple of little odds and ends. But that's the majority of the cool things that I found. But this is really cool. I'm hanging on to this for sure. Because that's a... Uh, an oddball piece of history in a way to find on this cool old carob. And like I said, it's a nice day. I want to do some stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and throw some new speakers in here. Oh, look at that chandelier. It's so awesome. Uh, anyway, let's do a little bit of walk around. I'll kind of show you a few things that I found. Here's a toolkit. I actually found two toolkits in here. Um, these are definitely not Toyota tools. I don't know if these, I'm assuming these screwdrivers are, even though I don't see Toyota stamped anywhere on them because they're both I've got a valve core one. They both got colored screwdrivers. One's a flathead, one's a Phillips. But these wrenches do say, let's see, Toyota Motors right there, which is pretty cool. So I'm stoked about that. Um, got some of these right here, these like little safety triangle things if we break down on the side of the road, which we won't be doing, we're at a Toyota, but you never know. Uh, another thing I found is this wire right here goes to nothing, right there. Leads through there, leads down through there, and all the way up front. So, I don't really know what's going on with that, so we're going to figure that out in time. And actually, for the first time in any of my car's lives, these shocks are wore out. Which is a, a, a surprise to me. I mean, look at that. That's, that's pretty abnormal for one of these. At least in my experience, anyway. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and change these rear speakers out right now. They pretty much do not work at all. These are obviously an aftermarket larger speaker size. It's been kind of retrofitted in here. I have some OEM speaker grills right here. They're not in the best shape, but they're better than nothing. And then OEM speakers that I can steal these little brackets off of. And these speakers are trash. They're all ripped up and they're not in good shape. So 
Oh, I guess let's go ahead and get this thing popped out of here. I'm gonna throw some Rockford Fosgates in here. These are just cheap old Amazon specials. They're probably pretty low tier, but I know Rockford Fosgate's a pretty good brand, so that's why I went with them. Got some baffles for the back and the front, and some LEDs so I can change the interior lights on a little bit, make it a bit brighter. And I also got some Monroe MA700 air shock, so we'll throw all that on in this video and maybe do a couple other things I don't really know yet. Let's go ahead and just get working, though. Oh, these are, like, not really in there very well. Are they in there? It's all pepper. Are they in there at all? I don't know what I'm doing. All right, this is a new one for me. Right there. Finger. There is a bolt there and a bolt there with a flat wash, and that was holding these speakers in. Different, but it worked. Are these even any tighter than finger tight? No. JDM Hardware, NB, 4.8. Oh, that one's in more than bigger tight. All right, let's go figure out what size this is. Yep, it's done, who would have thought. And the magnet is actually really strong on these, which is not making this any easier. Uh, well, the person that threw these in, I'll give him credit. He soldered the speakers in there. It's more than a lot of people do, so. Bye. All right. New speakers are right here. You gotta be smarter than the box, Luke. Be smarter than a box. There we go. Boy. Oh, here we go. New speaker reveal. <gasps> Yay. There are certainly speakers of all time. I think these want to lean forward. I think they're going to go here like that. Nope, that's the other way. That's the wrong way. They're going to want to go like this. And that will lean them forward. All right, here's where we're currently at right now. Got these all put together. I don't necessarily know if I want to put the baffles right there because I don't think the grill is going to want to sit over there and look real nice. Oh, I actually think it'll fit and I could probably trim it up with a knife. Yeah, let's do that. Screw it. Why not? Through error, I triumph. Maybe I'm a real resident of triumph buyer. I don't really know. You know, these are designed for five and a quarter speakers, but they look a lot bigger. I mean, these are for four, but they look freaking huge. All right. Oh, you know what? That actually has to go underneath that because that does have to go underneath there. Dang. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're gonna have to put this in there. I'm gonna have to screw these all down. Okay. Now Alright guys, well I will admit this is not the cleanest of installations ever. Bike's not really good at all, but I just need something because right now there is front like tweeters and no rear speakers at all. Like we turn it all the way to max 
in the rear on the way home and it was like you could hear, least hear some, a little bit of popping and that's about it so not good need to fix that so after quite a while of the struggle bus this is what i got set up right here pre putting the grill on again not clean i know jumping from gauge to gauge isn't really what you want but this is really tight like i can't get much more play out of it so so i guess let's try this out with some royalty free music and hope this works i just say this thing cold starts yeah that's really good this thing has ran a couple of days but all right let's go ahead and get this turned on Let's see, Bluetooth, Thunderbucket, this is the Thunderbucket stereo on my old phone. So now let's go to the YouTube app and let's do some good old fashioned, oh gosh, Bill Murray. Let's see, Better Hell's a good song. Oh, I'm not used to YouTube with ads. This is my not my primary phone. Okay, this isn't terrible, so we'll play this. Um, is that on? Let's see, how do I... I don't know how to work this radio yet. Source. Tuner. Oh, it's not going to be set at the same station. 83... Well, that's going to be a while. Oh, boy. Well, 107 and 83 are apparently close enough. Well, it certainly makes noises. It's only set to one speaker right now, so. That actually sounds quite a bit better now. Yeah, it's a lot clearer. It was a little staticky, but again, I was at a totally wrong FM station for this, so. Yeah, in a future video, what I'm gonna probably go ahead and do is, uh, blow the entire interior out of this thing, uh, lay some sound deadener down, and then when I do that, I'll go ahead and run new speaker wire to the back, a little bit longer, because this stuff is reaching its max. I don't even know if I can, I can really reuse that wiring at all, to be honest. It's super stubby. I mean, I probably could have clipped it and maybe made it work with some, with a little bit of manipulation, but I'm just going to go ahead and add all new wire, because that's, I would like it to be all tucked and hidden, and underneath those door panels and not really door panels the plastic panels and stuff like that so yeah but it's one of those things while i do it i'm gonna run sub wiring because i want to run a sub in this car nothing crazy i'll snip like right here the sub that i've been thinking about scooping up just a rockford fosgate 10 sub amp combo in one um and then while i do that i'll lay some sound deadener down maybe mentioned that already but i'll lay a bunch of sound deadener down and uh you know Put all new speaker wiring, amp wiring, the whole nine yards, kind of tuck all that, hide it, make it look really nice. And so I want this to be a decent car. I don't really want to half-ass everything. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and knock the other rear speaker out, put the covers on, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys here in a second in the front. I done. I will say I'm way more proud of this one, but I also have more cable to work with on this side. So, yeah. Anyway, time to go knock out the fronts. We're starting to lose daylight a little bit quick, so... I'm gonna go ahead and throw these air shocks on the rear because I really want to get this done today. Even though I can't really technically legally drive it, this is gonna won't. <laughs> so these are the exact same lifts, lifts, shocks I ran in my lift kit video. Uh, was it like a year or two ago I did that video? I think it's been two years now. It's been a minute. Um, nothing really is gonna be different about this installation. I'm gonna do it the exact same way, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cut it a little bit short. But I wanted to at least put it on video that I'm doing it because. These are awesome. These shocks are amazing. I'll probably run it at like 50 PSI and it'll get rid of this, uh, get rid of this grandpa rake we got going on. I mean, for a lower mileage car, these springs are still sagging. So let's go ahead and get these old shocks out. We'll check them out, see how they look. Go from there. Oh, 
couplers about had it. people. Womp womp. I just pulled that shock out and it just fell down. So sadly these shocks are beat. Which is no surprise it's really bouncy. It doesn't do a whole lot of anything in the back. I don't know how well this will focus in the video, but these are uh, Toyota shocks. KYB Toyotas, whether they are the OEM ones or not, I don't know. But they're roached. They ain't doing nothing. Bummer, but that's why we're replacing them. Got the shocks loosely in here right now. Nothing's really snugged up tight. The bolts are not even finger tight yet. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of do that right now while I get these airlines ran. And once these airlines are ran, I'll go ahead and shoot some air into them, snug up all the bolts, and we'll be good to go. All right, guys, it's getting late. It's about eight o'clock right now. Uh, I got work in a couple hours, quite literally. So I gotta go ahead and take a shower and quick edit this video before I fall asleep. So, well, before I do that, let's shoot some air in these shocks. That's about 60 PSI right there. Oh yeah, it's got a little rake. Probably drop it down a little, but first things first, we gotta check it for leaks. All right. That looks pretty good. These are all pretty much just hand tight. I do got to do a little bit of routing of these lines a little better, but we'll get take care of that a little later. Yeah, I think we're good there. The other side. Well, shocks are done. See pretty airtight, which is nice. I'm gonna go dot the lines up off camera. And uh, tomorrow, we'll hopefully have some good news about the plate, and then we'll get the front speakers knocked out. Maybe a couple of little things in this video. Gonna see how it goes. So, yeah, see you guys in the morning. Well, it hasn't even been 24 hours. About uh, four hours ago, they contacted me. So, let's go see what the damages are. $230 later, we're road legal. Woo! I'm excited. It's a beautiful sunny day outside. I got dinner plans tonight. So, uh, we might go take it for a drive, even though it's still on clapped out tires. And, Really needs transmission fluid changed and an oil change and a bunch of other stuff, but uh, it's nice out and it's world legal now. So I think we'll go home, throw the plate on it, take a shower, and I'm gonna head out for dinner. We'll take the care of because she hasn't been on the road yet since she's been home, like legally anyway. So. Too short, but I don't really care. Oh, yeah, definitely necessary. Oh. 
This thing starts so good. Where's the clutch pedal at? Oh. <coughs> I'm gonna get fixed soon. I'm trying to wait till winter. I'm just trying to wait till winter, but we'll make do. We'll make do. First ride with the old air shocks. Yeah, it's a sunroof day. Ah. Oh. I should put tires and do an alignment on this thing and finish the front shocks and front speakers and everything like that for them out here driving it like this, but really hard to pass up the first really beautiful 70 degree day in the Midwest here. Uh, it's not often we get a lot of 70 degree days the second week of March, so I'm gonna take advantage of it while I got it. So, oh, that's really gonna be it for this video. Uh, got some other projects going on this week and this weekend so i'll take you along for those rides when they happen but that's all i got for today thanks for watching catch you guys in the next one adios